Hey again everybody. Hey, I'm trying to make a few videos today just because the weather's so nice and I got some decent light in here and I got time. So I finally finished up some of my own personal projects uh, that have been lingering for months now. Um, this being one of another one of them. Um, this is a 1973 Penton 250 with the KTM motor. And uh, I bought this basically needing a full rebuild, which is what I did, you know, like the Mako that I also just did a video on. Took everything down to the last nut and bolt and cleaned everything, replaced what needed to be replaced, put in new bearing seals, gaskets, all of that stuff. So this motor came completely apart. Uh, it was in good shape. The had the normal issues that these KTM motors have after 50 years or so is um, one of the things being that this uh, clutch actuator had been pretty well worn and if you're familiar with them the little pin that pushes the rod um, had flattened out so replaced that um, replaced the clutches uh, piston and rings the crank in this was actually nice shape um, just new crank bearings and seals and gaskets and that kind of thing i'm just running the uh, stock bing carburetor with the uh, reed valve assembly ahead of it so that was a little bit ahead of their time in 73 um, ktm i'm not going to give you the history of the start of the KTM motors in the Pentons here and started KTM off-road motors in general. You can read about that yourself, but uh, this is essentially the, the start of KTM off-road here with these Pentons. So a very nicely engineered bike. This is a chrome molly frame here. And when this thing's stripped down, that frame is so light. It's almost like a bicycle frame absolutely incredible um i was really impressed with the that and the fact that um even though this bike had been you know obviously well used in the uh back in the 70s um, no cracks or damage whatsoever to the frame so uh, a really good quality frame as well as being incredibly light so um you know everything that you see here has been gone over as been replaced or is uh, was in good shape and just refinished um, I did get aftermarket correct uh, ABS white fenders for it which is what it had originally this had the aluminum tank on it which I was one of the things that sold me on this particular bike because um, the fiberglass tanks I just stay away from at all costs anymore the ethanol gas these days even if the tank is in nice shape uh, it releases the resins from the insides of the old fiberglass tanks, which gums up your carb and your motor and everything. So I, I don't really deal in any of the old bikes that have uh, fiberglass tanks anymore. So this aluminum tank is nice. It has the leather strap here that holds it in place. Um, this side cover was actually signed by John Penton back at one of the vintage days in Os in. 2007 and the owner of this bike told me that John had actually ridden it around the track a couple of times um, so it, very cool you know history of uh, John this this was his baby and he actually uh, rode this particular bike so that's cool um, pipe was in really nice shape I'll go around to this side. Um, I know I'm back a little, little bit here, but I think you can still see okay. The uh, it's kind of an interesting shifter kicker set up there where they overlap each other and all. But uh, these are Cheriani forks, and I got Works Performance shocks back here. I wasn't able to find these seats come in two lengths 
This is what they call the short seat. And they also have the long seat. The long seats covers are easy to find with the Benton logo on the back. Short seats are much tougher to come across. I actually had a friend of mine who has done many, many seats over the years for me um, cover this one for me just because I couldn't find one of the short covers for that. Um, this engine, I, I dumped the Motoplat ignition and I put on a HPI ignition, um, which always work great. They're at the low end cost of the electronic ignitions, um, but they work beautifully. I've never had a problem with one. So HPI ignition and the bang, and it is a super easy starter, usually on the second kick cold. And it runs really well. Boy, this thing, mid-range to top end, I don't know if I mentioned that, but this bike just rips um, in those ranges. I mean, it is, uh, it'll, I think it'll keep up with uh, Elsinore um, in, you know, mid-range to top end. So it'll be really interesting to get it on the track. Um, I know a couple of guys here in in Denver that race the Pentons at the vintage races and uh, really like them. So I haven't had much time on this yet, uh, but I hope to get some time in on it in the coming weeks and get it out for at least a couple of races this coming season. So, hey, thanks for looking. And I've got a couple other bikes that I'm going to do some quick videos on here and get posted. Thank you.